From Washington, the McLaughlin Group, the American original. For over two decades, the sharpest minds, best sources, hardest talk. When you meet our people, understand their vision, the spirit of self-reliance, and legendary can-do attitude. It won't surprise you that so many world-class companies are proud to call Mississippi home. Visit Mississippi.org to see what we can do for you. As the world grows smaller, the ifs are now bigger than ever. If retirement savings can't keep pace with longer lives, if inflation sends the cost of employee benefits higher, for over 135 years, MetLife has provided insurance guarantees for life's many ifs. We have the experience, global resources, and vision to provide financial certainties for an uncertain world. No wonder 70 million customers around the world count on us. After all, we are MetLife. Issue one, to be or not to be. Nationalization, to my mind, is when the government seizes the bank, zeroes out the shareholders, um, and begins to manage and run the bank. And we don't plan anything like that. Planned or not, the day when the United States nationalizes a major bank may be upon us. Citigroup was one of the world's largest banks. Only two years ago, its market capitalization was $270 billion. Today, Citigroup has shrunk to $5.4 billion. And that $5.4 billion market cap is after receiving almost $50 billion in taxpayer bailouts. On Thursday, Citigroup stock fell to an all-time low of 98 cents. That's a penny stock in a bank that had been quote-unquote too big to fail. Former Treasury Secretary James A. Baker III and ex-Fed Chairman Alan Greenspan, both conservatives and Nobel Prize winning liberal economist Paul Krugman, favor nationalization. But here's the rub. Nationalization wipes out the shareholders, not the depositors, the shareholders. And once nationalized, getting the bank reprivatized is not easy. It takes a long time. The upside is stability. Question, what's the principal downside of a nationalization of Citigroup? Complete wipeout of shareholders, preferred shareholders, and bondholders. The possibility of a run on the other banks fearing the same thing's going to happen, John. I think the government of the United States has never, ever run a bank this size. Many of these banks have interbank loans with other banks, which could mean Citibank is sort of like a, a guy on the top of a ski slope and they're all tied together with a rope. He goes into the abyss and if he's tied to the others, he pulls them all with them. And Bernanke did this at the point where the banks were suddenly seen to be crashing because of a fear of nationalization and he's tried to spike that fear by making this statement, but that's what he was afraid of, John. Alan, what do you see there? Um, I don't necessarily see that it would uh, spark a run on banks because ordinary um, depositors aren't going to see this as a threat. This does, as you point out, it does wipe out the, the holdings of the people at the top. And I think, actually, the broader populace might enjoy the fact that the people at the top will be taking some kind of a hit. Uh, Newsweek has a poll coming out in our issue uh, next week done by Princeton Survey Research Associates, which finds that nationalization is uh, surprisingly uh, welcome among the public. They find a 56 percent majority really? thinking that the government should get something in return for bailing out uh, the banks. So I think you might want to look for another name, call it restructuring, if you will. But it seems to me that th this is the direction that we're, they're he we're heading in and that the public sees it as a way for the uh, administration to begin to uh, grab hold of the failing banks as opposed to just pouring money do, down a rat hole. Do you want to clarify your use of the word shareholders as people at the top? The shareholders mm -hmm. are affected. All the shareholders are affected. It's not mm -hmm. just the people at the well, top. Well, but you, the shareholders... Like you were talking about yeah, the, the governing, right, the governing right. board or the management. That, that, that's a good point. But the, the shareholders are already taking a beating uh, 
with the shares down to 98%, 98 cents for Citigroup. So I don't know that that's, that's uh, the bondholders will go. I, when I said run on the bank, I don't mean run for on, on the people the with positive, deposits. Not I mean, deposit. right. I mean a run. The I mean, depositors are I mean, okay. everybody mm -hmm. sells any stock mm -hmm. bonds they've got right. in banks. Right. That kind of run. Well, with all of this talk about nationalization, that sound you hear is Alexander Hamilton turning over in his grave. Look, there have been massive infusions of taxpayer money Hamilton? into the financial. What, what do you mean by starting, that? Starting the banking system in America there you go. and laying the basis federal for a free Reserve. market capitalist system in the United States and the, and the Federal Reserve, exactly. Look, there have been massive infusions of taxpayer dollars, not just into the financial sector, but also into the auto sector, the housing sector, and time and again we see failure. There has been so much outlay, trillions of dollars already committed, not just, again, to the banks, but across the board. And yet, all we have seen is continuing collapse. That, that share price for Citigroup, 98 cents, I, I mean, this is, they have to change the rules on the uh, stock exchange to allow under a dollar now right. to prevent these companies from being well, delisted. Well, well, Nothing has worked. There have to be, if we still have a free market system in this country, which is debatable, there have to be consequences to failure here, John. We have tried this. We have gone down the state route. It has not worked. If GM is going down the drain, why don't we nationalize it? Well, and, but what do you think is going on here? <laughs> well, <you> think <laughs> the nationalization but of, even of with, so many sectors. But here. with the bailouts, it doesn't seem to be working. Right. Uh, no, although we don't know what the consequences would have been had we let these things go under. I mean, we do know what happened when we, when we let things go under late last year. And they basically, if you would let, AI, you let IAG or Citigroup go under, we don't know what the path not taken would be. Uh, I, I think what we're, where we are here is uh, we have a certain set of ideological constructs that we're still using about free market capitalism. And when Alan Greenspan and James Baker are saying that basically we have no alternative but to nationalize the banks, I think we are in a situation now where, these, where this lingo is not serving us well. Nobody wants the government to be running the banks over the long term. Okay, the question is whether we basically no, run out of other options. Let's clear this up Temporary with the chairman. Mr. Chairman, what precisely do you want? What do you want Congress to do? I'd like sure. to challenge the Congress to give us a framework where we can resolve a multinational, complicated financial uh, conglomerate like Citigroup, like AIG, or others, if that right. became necessary. We do not right. have that framework, and therefore we have to work within the constraints of what we have. Sir, can you pin that down just a little bit more? So what's your feeling with regard to nationalization of individual banks? as a possible option in the future, as an abstract option, but I reiterate that we do not have the tools to do that. We don't have the tools to do it, but he's well, not against it in theory. Well, I yeah, I mean, I think they could find the tools to do temporary nationalization of failing banks. We're not talking about a permanent nationalization of the entire uh, banking system, and frankly, that's the we're heading in this direction. And the people who complain about that this is uh, a, a so socialist uh, engineering and that we should let the free markets prevail. Another thing the Newsweek poll finds is that the critics uh, are seen for what they are. They are not offering any kind of plausible alternative to what Obama is doing. It is too Here's early to declare problem. what he if, is doing a failure. If the consensus is that nationalization of the banks is, is the only route that is going to salvage uh, the financial mm -hmm. system here, then it is it goes back to your point Eleanor and yours Peter too about the temporary nature of this. Once we let the vampire into the house of the federal government, as we already have, as we have with the auto industry, as we have with the housing industry, the challenge is getting the government out. And we know John, the, the track record I, on this, Pat. We, yeah. they, let, the me government the let me speak for the vampire. Let me speak for you. I got a question for you. I got a question for you. I think there's a fundamental question of fairness to the shareholders. Right. They're the ones who take the hit. Well, look, in this nationalization. Uh, let me speak, what is that? How do you resolve that? Let me speak that? one. Look, the stockholders are just about finished. I'm a preferred stockholder. I think we're going to be finished. Bondholders will be finished. It would be a serious problem. Let me speak for the vampires. You let Citibank go down, and it pulls down these other banks, the Federal Deposit Insurance Company, then we'll have to step in and cover everybody up to, I think it's 250000 now. A lot of people above that. They're wiped out, and the whole thing yeah. continues down. Lehman right, Brothers took up. the market Did, down 4,000 points. Right. Exit question. Is the nationalization of Citigroup inevitable? Yes or no? Pep, you can. I think it is. Ellen. 
I think it is, and I think the, the uh, allowing Lehman Brothers to go down early in this financial collapse was a huge mistake. We may not be where we are. We might not be where we are if mm -hmm. that hadn't been allowed to happen. The nationalization of Citigroup has already begun. Most of us now, well, all of us who are taxpayers are now involuntary shareholders of up to 39 percent of Citigroup. We're already down this path. The question is keeping it temporary. Yeah. Absolutely, and we, it will and become they, temporary because over time, when we come out of this, the natural free market instincts of the American people, which are in abeyance now, will return. I do not think the nationalization of Citigroup is inevitable, but I do think the breaking up of Citigroup is inevitable. Issue 2, Polenti, 2012. We need to be talking about how to make opportunity and empower and provide uh, uh, you know, jobs for people who have modest and middle incomes. I call them Sam's Club voters. We have to have a party that has a feel and a concern and a tone and an understanding of the importance and the challenges of the working class of this country. The big news out of last weekend's Conservative Political Action Conference, CPAC, with its 8,000 plus conservative activists in the audience, was an impassioned speech given by Tim Polenti the Republican governor of Minnesota. He is now positioned to be one of the five frontrunners likely to head the Republican presidential ticket in 2012. Talk about us Along one way with in Scranton Sarah Palin, and another Alaska way in governor, San Mitt Romney, former Massachusetts governor, Bobby Jindal, current Louisiana governor, and Ron Paul, 13th uh, year Texas congressman and 08 presidential answer. candidate. Actually, Tim Polenti, 48 years old, University of Minnesota, B.A. and Juris Doctor, a practicing attorney for 15 years. Minnesota State Legislature, House of Representatives, 10 years. Minnesota House Majority Leader, 4 years. State of Minnesota Governor, 8 years and currently, 2002 to 2010 when his term ends. Tim is known for witty political jibes. The Democrats convened a fiscal responsibility summit. What's next? Are they going to have Rod Blagojevich convene an ethics summit? Question. Only 2% of the CPAC, that's Conservative Political Action Conference, attendees voted Governor Tim Pawlenty as their top pick for president in 2012, last week, at that conference. Will per, or did Pawlenty, why did he score, score so poorly when he is a committed conservative with that Irresistible political profile. <laughs> uh, John, I had breakfast with Palenti the very morning that uh, Sarah Palin was picked. He's a nice fellow. He is a conservative. He is not known nationally. And as you saw, he's not a man that burns the paint off the walls. He's, when he's not a bad speaker. He, he's a clear speaker, John. <laughs> And he's a nice speaker, but that is not uh, what the party's going to do. Who's going to defeat him? Ron Paul? I'll tell you, defeat him. And out of your list was, uh, I'll tell you, there are three people I would say the front runners now. I would say Palin, Romney, and Huckabee. Ron Paul would clearly get a vote, but he would not win. But I don't think Palenti's in the top five. Because Newt is, quite frankly, I think uh, a good deal higher than Palenti would be. Did you oh. see the conservative ratings of some of these uh, uh, individuals that you mentioned as listed by Human Events this week? the classic uh, conservative newspaper that I be believe you endowed. <laughs> <laughs> My column is, does, does very well there, John. Human but, events. Well, human events is, is traditional conservative, down the line, solid conservative. Yeah, and they would very much be in, uh, in, with, the, with the straight line conservative point of view, no doubt about it. But I don't think they would be promoting Palenti as man of the year. Well, you saw he got so only 2% of the, of the conservative yeah. activists. Governor, but Pal he's Governor Palenti is going to be in the running for 2012, and he's going to represent the so-called moderate wing, and he's, this was not his crowd, the CPAC uh, conservatives. And you're right, Palenti comes from a working-class background. He has uh, some connection with reality in his, in his life, uh, but he doesn't have the red meat rhetoric that appeals this, to the to well, right wing. Well, there, are, there are opportunities well, you, here for the yeah. Republicans, but they are not you're in a position to take her her <laughs> oh, What do you have to well, say about that? You know, you, you mentioned the CPAC poll that showed Pawlenty only polling 2%. You know who po polled the top? 
Mitt Romney. He gave a barn burner stem winder of a speech at CPAC. It was the best speech by a Republican politician really? I've seen in a very long time. Romney, I think Romney is the front runner, to tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. I mean, Polenti is a very nice guy. He's, he is, he's sort of a go along to get along type conservative. And I can tell you through my radio show every day, I talk to the conservative base. They are in no mood to go along with Obama and his socialization <laughs> plans for the United States. They but want, no. they want the stem winder speeches. They want a yeah. dynamic conservative. The, 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 the conservative, the the conservative, the conservative, conservative, right? The Von Brenner, the Von Brenner right. conservatives are, are heading straight towards their right. own 1972 in 2012. What's happening is it's kind of a, a death spiral in the Republican yeah. Party, in, 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 for, for, in, in the opposite years. way. The opposite. The opposite. This is going to be your times. McGovern. You're going to have your ideologically pure candidate because your party's no, gotten right, so right, small right, that the conservatives are controlling, and it is further and further. Let me finish. It has become further. If you look at all the polling, the Republican base is further and further. Let me tell you away why you're wrong. Average America. You, got a, you had a Democratic disaster in 79, and that opened the door for a tremendously right authentic conservative, 100% right true, true blue. Whoever the Republican nominee, if this thing part things down, no, 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 you have it exactly wrong. You have it exactly wrong. Because even if things are bad, Obama still gets credit for trying. Exit the question. Exit no, 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 the question. So the Exit the question. What are, are going down? All right, let me in here, please, Patrick. Hold yes. it. What are the odds that Polenti will win the GOP nomination in 2012, Pat? Same two percent he got. Oh. <laughs> oh, I, I think it's fifty-fifty. But the party oh, is on. the party the is the party is, is at Win war. The nomination? Excuse you me. are kidding. Excuse me. The party is at war with itself, and uh, the Republican leadership has imploded over the last two weeks. With Rush Limbaugh, the face of the party, Bobby Jindal not ready for prime time, all the rest of <laughs> we them falling over, oh. I think, <laughs> apologizing oh. to Rush Limbaugh. How do you how do you even <laughs> begin <laughs> with that? <laughs> You're going to go down the list. Let her in. Let her in. Let her in. I want to finish my statement, and that is the. Valenti looks pretty good to people who aren't part of the right wing mafia. You know what? There is no, uh, there's, let me rephrase it. There's a limited appetite for what Paul Enti is selling, not at this moment. I don't believe he's the kind of candidate that the Republicans are going to be looking for. Well, go ahead. I think his chances are a little better than Pat's. Uh, <laughs> issue three, honeymoon kaput. This week has seen a sudden rise in conversation and news of President Obama. Major newspapers have featured leading economic gurus slamming the president. Paul Kruger at the New York Times, quote, The reality is that when it comes to dealing with the banks, the Obama administration is dithering, unquote. Steve Forbes, Wall Street Journal, quote, What is most astounding about President Barack Obama's radical economic recovery program is not its breadth, but its continuation of of the most destructive policies of the Bush administration, unquote. Michael J. Boskin, Wall Street Journal, quote, the illusion that Barack Obama will lead from the economic center has quickly come to an end, unquote. Charles Krauthammer, a Washington Post, quote, few undertake the kind of brazen deception at the heart of Obama's radically transformative economic plan. A rhetorical sleight of hand so smoothly offered that few noticed clever politics, but intellectual dishonesty to the core, unquote. What do you think of those favored terms of Mr. Krauthammer? I, I'm, I'm Did shocked. You work with him? I'm shocked. Charles Krauthammer and Steve Forbes and Michael Boskin, who's a Republican economist, are disapproving of Barack Obama. And he Paul must be Krugman, going down. Though, and, Paul yeah, and Paul Krug. Yes, and he's being hit for the, right. hit for the left, but the left has nowhere to go. The left is right. still going to be behind Obama. Right. If you look at the polls, which is you know a reality check here. For, for someone in an economy that this is bad, this bad, Obama is still remarkably popular. That's exactly right. Again, the Newsweek poll says the honeymoon is far from over. His personal approval ratings are high. His popularity yeah, is high. His, what, but Krugman <clears throat> is right when he says you can't just put principles out there and say details to come. Mm -hmm. And the Treasury Department has failed on this front, and they haven't gotten an, their appointees in there. It's and, a fanatical, he's, yeah, and he's made a strategic yeah, error, John. Processes what you might, up people. What you might know, also made it, include in your vision is his disapproval rating. His disapproval rating is up to 28. John, oh, and that is that, 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 that is for that. Now, <laughs> John, at the same a, point, in all of the other collected presidencies mm -hmm. since Gallup began, he is 50% off the mark. Is that correct? Right, right. No, John, and also, look, he's made a strategic mistake. On Iraq, he's dead on. He's in the center, and he's got the conservatives with him. His budget came out. It went. It came out of the closet all the way to the left, that budget. 
1.75 trillion, and that's based on assumptions that are wrong. It's going over two trillion. He's going for health care. He's going for the garbage tax. He's going yeah. for everything. Okay, okay. You know what that's called left. by some people? It's called snow. And this is a snow job. In a snowstorm, you can't find your way. <laughs> is that what Obama does? Mur murking it up. Um, does he murk it up? Uh, he, well, listen, I think that when I look at this White House and all I see is panic and fear and doom and gloom, and that's not to say that the economy is not in a crisis. It is. But the problem here is that what we're seeing what? from this White House and the Treasury Department with a lack of a financial sector bailout with actual details what and follow-through. we're talking about, through, though, is the, you are seeing the, the uh, number John, and opacity. I, I want to talk it's about not, the number, excuse not, me, the number and the opacity of all of not, these issues that are blinding us. What, what are you talking about? Anything. What are you talking about? He's he's not, he's he, said, he, he said exactly, he said exactly, he said exactly what he, he said exactly global what warming. Like, he says he's going to do health care. He says he's going to do global it's warming. He said he's going to do a big stimulus. He's right. exactly what he's going to do. right. Is it sleight of hand? Yeah, it's no, a, it's, it's an ambitious agenda, but it's a popular agenda. Is this criticism of Obama building? Will it build or will it ebb? It is going to build and build and build. He has overloaded the circus. And this program, which nobody thinks is going to work, had better work, or they're going to be wiped out in 2010. So that, that might ease the way for Tim Pawlenty, right? <laughs> right, on, right through. Uh, he, he, is, he's, he is overloading the circuit. He has two agendas, the one that he ran on and the one that's been forced on him, and he's, and he's trying to do both. And, and, the right, the right, he, he and is overloading the circuit. Not if you ask uh, the American all people. The, all the pieces fit together, and the American people so far you are... You think they can uh, sort are, them out? No, listen, Congress, why isn't he focusing Congress, on the economy? He is exclusively. Health care is part of the economy. So is, so is you know energy. Why? You know what? What does he do with the health conference? He says, I don't want to interfere with any of the proceedings right. now going on. It right. sounds as though no. it's going no. to be a committee that's, action. That's on smart the, because he doesn't want to get too identified with any specifics. That's exactly what George you know W. What? Bush did. You know what? No, it's not. Smart presidents basically hang back a little bit and take credit. He's building to hold his negatives to a minimum in 2012. His negatives may go beyond 30 percent. Heaven forbid. The question is, is criticism going to continue to build? Yes, it will. And that's why he's moving a thousand miles an hour, because he knows he's going to jam everything into this agenda. <laughs> Issue four, stock market guru. Don't worry. Be happy. In every life we have some trouble. When you worry, you make it double. Don't you spend all your time worrying about that then you're probably going to get the long-term strategy wrong. President Obama may now be stock analyst Obama. The stock market is safe, Barack says so, if you wait long enough, which we may have to do. In four months, the Dow Jones Industrial has dropped some 3,000 points. Nevertheless, the president says buy and be patient. Buying stocks is a potentially good deal if you've got a long-term perspective on it. How long a perspective? Some say four years, 2012, after the president's re-election is safely behind him. So is stock analyst Obama right? Is now the time to buy? You think the market will settle stock down? Stock analyst Obama is right. Let me tell you, when General Electric, which I believe, of course I work for the company, is going to survive and it's at $6 a share, if I were a young man, I would put money into it. He's right, it's 6000 John. It's come down from 14000 It may be crunched a bit, but in the long term, it's going to come back if the country comes back, and I believe it will. But an awful lot of people well, have been burned we, and wiped out in the interim. Haven't we seen a billionaire who, who invested uh, X billions of dollars in GE? Uh, we have. That's right. Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett. He hasn't doesn't hasn't done so well. But I don't think it's Barack Obama's place actually to be telling Americans where they should put their money. He may well be right. The stock market, but it's not really the president's well, job to basically tell you. You think the stock market is, is demeaning? No, but Americans might want to put their money in. They might want to put it in, in bonds. They might want to put it in housing. Stock market so it's has not his existed. position to tell them where it to invest. It has existed, not the stock market, since 1606. Did you know that? 1606. Yeah, this had to do with spice from India. Well, I, 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 agree, I, agree, I agree with Nobody Pat. Nobody was here in 1606, John. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't arrive until 1606. There, there, there were Native stock Americans that were here in 1606, Pat. <laughs> I didn't say a U.S. stock market. I said a stock market. Okay, okay. I, I agree with Pat that if you have a long time horizon, that buying uh, stock that are now under a dollar that were once blue chip stocks is probably a good investment. But I, I don't think it's a, a Barack Obama's place to get into this because ordinary consumers, I don't think, are going to follow his advice. And Wall Street recoiled in horror. And they look at this as a naive thing for a president to do. And uh, Wall Street is already uh, suspicious of this administration, whether they've got 
the cojones to pull all this off. And uh, I think this just added to uh, the sense of unease on... Okay, uh, who's to blame? I found this national debt doubled, wrapped in a big bow waiting for me as I stepped into the Oval Office. There were a lot of bad decisions that were made. We are cleaning up that mess. When we walked in the door, we found a budget deficit of $1.3 trillion. Pinning the economic rap on George Bush, do. And, Mr. Uh, Obama may feel his smart politics. We started this James Kramer of Mad Money fame says Obama's negativity mind, is producing down, fear in the market. The of- is nothing safe? Can any group be protected from the wealth-destroying efforts of President Obama? So far, it seems like everything this president touches, health care, the drug stocks, defense stocks, construction, the oils, even the utilities, they all get crushed. You need to Obama-proof your portfolio. That's right, as in bomb-proof. Question, is Kramer's criticism excessive or on target regarding Obama? Peter. It's excessive. Uh, you know, Obama's only been there for a little while. This, we basically, he hadn't hit bottom when we come in. I think the person who deserves the most blame is Alan Greenspan, who kept interest rates much too low for much too long, created this bubble. Who else? What other president <laughs> urged bye-bye in any regard? I, George I Bush did. Well, listen, well, I, I agree and, with Eleanor. And what about and Peter, George that, Bush Sr.? Didn't he do something in 1991? Position to go in there and encourage people to buy four stocks. Pair of stocks. Wait, 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 I want to I'll just go George get Bush, the when I was running against him, George, he went down to Rockville, I believe, and bought four pair of right. socks to beat the recession. That's this right. is George that W. H. George H. W. Bush. Yeah. Bush. Yeah. There you go. If everybody Listen, buys four Kramer pairs of socks, socks, we can get out of this thing. <laughs> <laughs> I wish, it were, I wish it were that easy. Uh, Kramer's criticism is right on target. Barack Obama is known for his oratorical skills, and yet he has done nothing to inspire any kind of confidence in investors, people who have skin in the game. Stock market has lost 3,000 points since this guy was elected. They believe that his policies are crushing free enterprise. They're crushing the investor class. They don't like it. Congratulations, sir. Ted Kennedy. Bye bye. Understand their vision, the spirit of self-reliance, and legendary can-do attitude. It won't surprise you that so many world-class companies are proud to call Mississippi home. Visit Mississippi.org to see what we can do for you.